you want to break into the GCPD headquarters for a what if? Be my guest. Hello and welcome everyone to Geo's first ever reaction and analysis to Gotham Knights gameplay. For anyone who's been on my channel long enough, you already know that I've done some videos in the past subtly or not so subtly criticizing the game already before it's even out. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the newly released 16 minutes of gameplay from the opening of the game and discussing how my thoughts have changed over time, whether or not I'm proud of those videos, some light comparisons to Arkham Knight, and what I think about everything we've seen so far from this game. Alright, let's hop in. The story picks up with the Gotham Knights investigating Kirk Langstrom and picking up after Bruce's trail. If you're any sort of Batman fan, animated series fans especially will know, Kirk Langstrom is Man Bat. So this entire section here shows us a side of the game I wasn't expecting to see because we hadn't really seen much of it yet, and that is the detective side, which is very much in line with Arkham Origins, which WB Games Montreal also developed. Feels a lot like that. Definitely an improvement over what little we got in Arkham Knight. We also see some light parkour, and this is where I can make a, some f comparisons to what Rocksteady did and, funny enough, WB Games Montreal did in Arkham Knight because they developed the Batgirl DLC. Arkham Knight doesn't have a dedicated parkour system per se, it really just built on what Arkham City had. So you can do a few flips and tricks, but very very few. It's mostly like if you go over a guardrail or something. And the move variety is limited there too, because you can really only double tap the evade button to do a roll over, or if you just run over it, your character will do a quick vault. As you saw there in the comparison, Batgirl did a little flip to get over, and now she's hopping around very similar to what they have in Arkham Knight. It looks like there's a little bit more animation variety a la Assassin's Creed. And now we get a good look at the grapnel gun. This one I think looks better than it did and also a little bit more cartoonish than it did in Arkham Knight. It goes longer distances and feels like there's less weight to it. However, the character accurately places their body so that they can stop the motion whenever the character nears the vantage point that they've hooked. We just saw a small clip of Batgirl gliding on the Gotham Knights official Twitter page. It's a little bit floatier and slower than the Arkham Knight one, but I think the animation's smooth enough that it's not really much of a problem. Back to the gameplay demo, we do get to see another small little parkour move, and we get back into the detective stuff I mentioned earlier. That girl follows these footsteps. It's very similar to the Arkham games, actually. And you'll notice that these rooms are very highly detailed, but only in certain areas. They have a density of detail, like the Grey Ghost poster, yet for whatever reason it doesn't feel as alive as some of the Arkham games. Here, even though the graphics are a lot more impressive, there is a loss in the granular side of things. It feels like an artistic decision and not really a technological or poor development thing. So it's not really a, necessarily a negative criticism. It's most likely that the rooms are designed to have a ton of space for the characters to move around in with the new combat system. Arkham Knight had something similar because of the Batmobile and the expanded streets. Characters would zip all over the place during combat. And here we get our first what I assume to be little detective puzzle in the game. So this is very easy one. You just find a number and then you drag it to the code pad and that's it. I mean, there's not much else to it, but of course this is really early game, so I don't expect anything too crazy. But it's a good tease for what we're gonna get in the game, and it isn't just point at the clue and it's over, like in the Arkham games. Another early game thing, you just randomly find this hard drive full of supposedly expository material. That girl pretty much just says it that way. And you can assume that's only because, like I said, this is pretty early game. At the same time though, the dialogue so far has been very on the nose levels of like, this is a tutorial. And in general, I don't think it's gonna get any better. Everything else I've just talked about feels like will improve as the game goes on. The voice acting almost feels like Batgirl is your kindergarten teacher and she's just reading you a story or something. There is a line reading later. I mean, take a listen to this. This is terrible. It could bring the whole building down. Smashy smashy smash smash. And that's enough said in that department. Now we move on to combat, and this is the thing that's been talked about the absolute most. It's going the route of Assassin's Creed, where they switched from the free flow combat to this. You get heavy and light melee attacks and evade. So my question is, is there a block mechanic? If this has already been answered, feel free to correct me in the comments below because that would be pretty interesting to have some sort of parry. The stealth gameplay, on the other hand, is pretty much identical. There are even some mechanics that I didn't think would carry over that are in this game. For example, you can see this icon right here, and it essentially feels like it's just a replacement for Knockout Smash. 
And you can also take down people from pretty much any distance or height, just like Arkham Knight allowed, which I do think makes the stealth a bit too easy, but it's not that big of a problem. Here we have our first specialty enemy, the Molotov Thrower, which if anyone remembers, the Arkham Knight CG trailer had a Molotov in it, and I don't think there were any in the final game. This is a very just for show tutorial-y way to deal with the Molotov guys. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a lot easier in game. As you saw, she threw Batarangs to disrupt him. We do see her dodging around them by just fighting. So they're not as dumb as they may look because the game is forcing you into this one-on-one -on -one situation. Finally, we have our first mini boss. Batgirl is using Batarangs and just general combat moves to disrupt him, which is more than we can say about the Titan dudes in the first game, whose only weakness was Batarangs. This takes all your strength. Now, does it look like it can be a bit damage spongy? Yes, but when the game is designed that way, it should get a lot flowier as you progress, as is the main takeaway for most of the mechanics in this game. We didn't even get to see the open world in this demo, really. We get to see more of what the story might be like. And honestly, it looks like it could have some intrigue. It's already pretty obvious that Kirk Langstrom is going to turn into Manbat, and I do think that retreads old ground because a lot of us already know that story. And generally, the dialogue and performance of said dialogue doesn't feel too strong, which isn't helped by the fact that most of these voice actors are not well known, and only Stephen O. Young, who most of you will recognize as Mr. Negative from the new Spider-Man game, has really done much of anything. However, the actual gameplay itself is way improved over the original demo they showed us all the way back at Fandom in 2020. It feels like the combat has actual weight now, and there's no more damage numbers or health bars. Maybe they're disabled for this demo, but it feels a lot more like a polished experience. So do I think I regret any of my videos about this game? Well, yes and no. I do think the game is in a much better place than when I was making those videos, and they were just for fun. They weren't trying to attack the developers or anyone who was a fan of the game. They were more just observational. Like the Red Hood video is not meant to be taken that seriously. It's obvious that the guy playing in the original Red Hood and Nightwing demo was not that great, and the game didn't look as polished as it does now. It feels like a waste of time to even compare to Arkham Knight at this point, considering they are much different beasts to each other. It all comes down to the storytelling and how much the gameplay evolves as it goes on. From what we've seen in the little snippets here and there, the game looks more exciting than what we were initially led on. But I don't want to be talking about Mystic Leap Fart or Fortnite Glider Nightwing any longer. I'm kind of shocked that Batgirl is the only one that has the generic glide mechanic from the older games. We also now know that the game will have high quality takedown animations, just like the Arkham games, that the stealth mechanics are almost practically the same until we see more. It's only fair that I review the game by playing it instead of just reacting to it, although I'm still on the fence. And as we always say, never pre-order. I'll wait till review, see if it's good enough at release, and give it a try. But I want to know in the comments, what do you think about this game? Are you excited? Do you not care? Did this demo change your mind? sound off and feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this for now i'll be sticking around in gotham see you all on the flip